correct? All right. In that order. Say amen for the youth choir. Amen. Has God been good to you? Yes. Some of us, we haven't seen you since Sunday, but whether we've seen you since Sunday or just yesterday, has God been good to you? Yes. Look, I've been learning so much about praise and worship, and there are so many things that I want to talk about because, you know, God deserves praise. He inhabits praise. If you ever want the Lord to show up, all you have to do is start a praise party. If you invite him by starting a praise party, he will show up every time. So come on, stand to your feet. And we're just going to sing a congregational song. You may, I mean, we didn't practice this the other day, but we just want you to clap your hands. And we just want you to catch on to the song. Is that all right? Amen. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. We have the victory, give the Lord some praise today. How many are you glad to be here on today? I need to say it again. How many are you glad to be here on today? God has been so good to us, for he has not let us live while others have gone on. God is a miracle working God. One writer said, if it had not been for Jesus, where would I be? Thank the Lord for saving me on this morning. And we give honor and praise to the Lord our Savior today. And we thank God for all of you that have come out to celebrate with us on this special occasion, this Father's Day. God has been so good. He's a miracle worker. He's blessing even when you cannot expect it. Let us look away to the Lord on today. Just begin to just solemnly give him some praise today. All over the building, just help us to praise him today. That's it. That's it. Come on, all over the building. God is so worthy. God has done anything for you today, you have a right to praise Him. And we praise Him right now, bowing right now, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, here we are. We come before your presence today, Lord. We come humbly, Lord, with thanksgiving in our hearts, Lord. And we come to praise you. We come to magnify and to lift up thy holy name. For, Lord God, there's no like you nowhere. And we recognize that you are God, and you're God all by yourself. We ask the Lord that you come in the room today. Move in a special way. In the name of Jesus, saving you have to flee. Lord God, there's no room for him here today in this service. We thank you today. Today, Lord, all of those that are under the sound of my voice, Lord, come in today, Lord. We need your presence today, Lord. We need you to walk the room today, Lord. Oh, God, we know that you can and we know that you will. Somebody today, Lord, is looking for a blessing. Somebody today, Lord, needs a special touch. That only that can come from you today, Lord. Stir us up today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, sing your blessing today, Lord. Somebody needs healing today. Somebody needs deliverance today. Set the captives free today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And oh God, we thank you this morning, Lord. 
for awakening us today, Lord. Clothe us in our right mind, giving us a will and determination to go on. Oh God, we know that it wasn't the alarm clock, but you woke us up this morning, Lord. And we come to give you praise today. We come to celebrate your holy name. For God, you brought us from a mighty long ways off. We don't know what we could have done without you today, Lord. Many of us have been in battle today, Lord. Back up against the wall. But God, that you pulled us out, Lord. Lord, it was you that was pulling us out. And we, hey, 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 we recognize the word today, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And Lord God, we ask that you would have mercy on us today. For you say in your word, what shall the prophet of man? If you gain the whole world and lose his soul, what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Here we are today, Lord. We realize, Lord, that we couldn't have done it without you. Never would have made it without you today. And God, we thank you today. Thank you for our leadership that's here in the church today, Lord. Thank you for this pastor today, Lord. He's a father. We thank you for him today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Lord, bless the first lady today. Touch her. In the name of Jesus. Bless her watch today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Look on every missionary that's here today, Lord. Look on all of our mothers today, Lord. The deacons that are here today, Lord. Oh, God, the choir ensemble here on today. They are Christian today, Lord. Do it today, Lord. Do a new thing. We need you today, Lord. Sing your blessing today, Lord. In the name of Jesus. None like you know well, Lord. We ask you, Lord, as we go forth in this service, that you will look on us today, Lord. Many have prayer requests today, Lord. We ask that you will honor them today, Lord. Look on every pew today, Lord. Look on our friend. Look on every visitor that's here on today, Lord. We know that you can and we know that you will. For you got all power in your hand. Sing your word today, Lord. Sing your word today, Lord. Lord, oh God, we know that you can. We need to hear a word today, Lord, coming from you today, Lord. We know that you can. Bless the man, the, the man of the hour today, Lord, as they prepare to bring the word today, Lord. And oh God, there are many among us, Lord, and there are many that are in the cities and in the countryside, Lord, and that are sick in their bodies. Many need healing today, Lord. We know, God, that you have the healing power. Lord, we ask that you will bless them today, Lord. Those that are in the hospital room, convalescent centers, those that are on the beds of the section, rehabilitation center today, Lord. Do it today, Lord, in a special way, Lord. And we realize today, Lord, that you have the power, and we ask that you come in the room today Lord bless this service in a special way and Lord God we'll be careful to give you the glory we'll give you all the honor and praise we ask it in Jesus name everybody arouse and they praise him today thank you Lord that's it thank you Lord thank you Lord hallelujah please remain standing for the reading and hearing of his word on today Make a joyful noise unto the Lord in all ye lands. Serve your Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, that he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not we ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and is and his truth endured to all generations. Amen. Amen. Give us further directions for the youth Sunday. Say amen for the youth choir. Amen. Don't they look good in this choir saying on this morning? All right, they're coming. They sing well. The scripture declares and commands that we should clap our hands. Listen, there are all kinds of ways for us to praise and magnify the name of the Lord, but we need to understand that the clapping of our hands praises God. So the song, the youth choir is coming with the song, everybody clap your hands. Amen. Oh, y'all don't think that many of y'all do. Everybody clap your hands. 
Come on and clap your hands, everybody. Oh, come on and clap your hands, everybody. Oh, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, we enjoyed this election coming from our children. Come on, give praise God for these children who are here in the right hand. All right. Bless Sister Ryan. We ready for you. Give us direction. Today we will have lessons learned from brother Stanley Dixon. I say amen as he come. Oh, come on, y'all. Come on. Just praise God as he come. This is you Sunday. Amen. We're grateful for these children on today.
morning. First lady, I don't know why you gave me a live mic, but. <laughs> But I want to thank Sister Jones for coming in because I was, it's a lot of lessons learned, but I want to thank Sister Jones for coming in because she had been asking me for a long time to give this testimony. Um, in 1991, um, I had enrolled at Mississippi Valley State University and I decided to leave and I joined the United States Air Force. And I trained in the Air Force out of George Air Force Base in uh, Los Angeles, California. And my mom got sick, um, ended up coming back, and took a wrong turn. Right. That turn is I found a, a person that I admired, my oldest brother, Dan. Yeah. But as the years passed, of course, I learned that I loved my brother, but I wasn't to have followed in his footsteps because he was a uh, kingpin drug dealer. Oh, wow. And uh, um, he asked me to be his right hand man. At that time, I'm like, no, because I saw the hurt that was in my mother's eyes yeah. about him selling drugs and being out in the street in the world. But um, I decided that because the way we were raised, you were supp supposed to respect your older brothers and sisters. And what I, what I still do to this day, so I, protected my brother. Uh, we were gangsters out there in the streets. You know, we fought, we did it all. You know, shooting, fighting the whole night. At the same time, we were breaking our mother's heart. Yes. And uh, and my dad, because my dad was there, being at his father's day, uh, thank my father, thank God for giving me a great man. I mean, who loved us, who, you know, cared for us, who protected us. And, uh, but anyway, he, my, my brother Danny, um, he sold drugs and he messed around and uh, got caught with an ounce of crack cocaine. They gave my brother 60 years mandatory without the possibility of parole. So hatred built up in my heart uh, for the people that set him up. And I had, you know, I had what I learned through my wife was called a murdering spirit that whole, you know, it, it hovered over me for a long time, yeah. for many years. And I'll never forget, um, one day, I was outside, I was cleaning my car. And for whatever reason, my wife walks outside, she says, Damn. she said, I had been coming here, Pastor and First Lady, I had been coming here with, with my wife for quite a few years. And I was like battling, you know, the demon on the left side, Christ on the right. Yeah. And uh, I was confused. But when my wife came to me and she said, Stanley, the uh, good Lord told me to tell you to take that hatred out of your heart for those people, you know, just to let it go. So I kneeled down by my car and I prayed, tears running down my face. And when I got up, because I was like, Lord, yes, please remove this hatred. You know, because it, it's a lot. It's a lot to carry yeah. hatred in your heart and for those many years and yeah. seeing no change. And uh, anyway, after I did that and I rose up, it's like the weight of the world was lifted off my shoulders. Yeah. And uh, so the very next day, I'm outside. That was on a Saturday. I'm outside. I get a phone call. It was my brother Danny calling me for prison because, well, what I thought, because see, my mom, let me tell y'all, there's a such thing as dying from a broken heart. Yes. We lost our mom. My brother went to jail in 1995. We lost our mom in March of 96. And lost our father in March of 98, wow. almost to the day because my mother worried about my brother Danny spending the rest of his life in prison. She worried herself to an early grade. And after my mom passed, my dad, he basically gave up on living because my mom was all he ever knew. And uh, so anyway, that Saturday, I get that call from my brother Danny, and uh, he was like, hey, look, bro, uh, what you doing? I said, 
oh man, I'm just out here with the car, so what's up? He was like, um, when you come to see me? And I'm like, uh, well, I'm getting my ride to be able to say, you know, I'll be there tomorrow to see you if we had to visit him on Sunday. And uh, he was like, what you talking about? And I'm like, what you mean what I'm talking about? You ask me what I'm doing, I told you uh, I'm getting, you know, getting my ride to be able to come, come to the prison to see you. And uh, he was like, no, bro, I need you to come see me at the house. I'm at home. Yeah. 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 He, he did 22 years. Um, and, you know, me and my siblings, we all did it with him, you know, and uh, it's hard, but I would tell a lot of these young men just walking around with your pants sagging down, Amen. a lot of people Amen. don't explain to you where that crap comes from, but it comes from prison because young men were getting raped in prison and versus them worrying about walking around with their pants up, that's a sign that, hey, I've already been raped and I'm just trying to tell a lot of young, my young black men and brothers Amen. that, man, pull your pants up. Amen. Only done is walk around with your pants down. Trust and, and to a lot of young ladies, you know, for whatever reason, back when we were coming up, being a virgin and saving yourself for marriage yes. was a key thing to being blessed and having success. Yes. And a lot of young ladies now, for whatever reason, because there's so many followers, they think that being a virgin is a sin. No, being a virgin is when you win. Because you only have that one soul that's not to give. So thank you, Pastor. Thank you, First Lady, for allowing me to come here for as many years as I have come and for changing my life. Because it was y'all prayers up front, behind the scenes, you know, those scenes unseen seen prayers that have kept the chance for me. Y'all know to give God praise. I say, y'all know to give God praise. Because he's a deliverer. How can you know he delivers? Thank God for deliverance. Come on, somebody. Thank God for deliverance. Can y'all just get in the atmosphere of praise for just a moment? Come on, somebody. Give God a praise. Come on, give God praise. Give God a praise. Oh, bless the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, oh hallelujah, hallelujah. Help me shout hallelujah. Help me shout hallelujah. Come on and shout hallelujah. Oh, bless him, bless him. God is getting deliverer. He knows how to set free. And I hope that you all will listen, especially uh, our youth today, amen, to know that the streets is not the way it is not the way now his brother was blessed to not have to do all 60 years many yes, people sir. Yes, sir. are yet there and will die in prison but not only that he didn't tell everything he told me some other thing amen that he was involved in god has kept him spared his life and gave him an opportunity to become a part of the church. But many, amen, give, that's right, give God a praise. But it breaks my heart. And I've been praying more, listen to this, I've been praying more for black young males. Because it breaks my heart to see so many who are being gunned down and are going to jail. Listen, young men and young ladies, ladies, there is a better way. Give God another hand for you. Sister Riley, where are we now? It's offering time. All right, we want to proceed. Our offering for today, I would that everybody, let's share in this part of our worship service. The Lord has so wonderfully blessed us. Somebody should have said amen. amen. I know we're living in a time they, they talk about inflation, the prices are yet going up. Amen. Amen. And, and things sometimes are quite difficult. But I don't think, uh, I don't think any of us have missed any meals. I don't think we have. Y'all look mighty prosperous. Ain't nobody saying anything. Y'all didn't catch that, did you? I said, y'all look mighty prosperous. 
we still gaining weight. <laughs> come on, y'all. Y'all come on and say amen. amen. The Lord has been good to us. Come on, look at the name and say, the Lord has been good to you. Amen. We have clothes to wear, food to eat, yes, sir. a roof over our heads. We need to learn how to appreciate what God has done. Amen. Now, you may not have everything that you want. And you may not have everything. But look at what the Lord has done for you. Amen. And how good God has provided for you. And so, therefore, we ought to want to praise and worship the Lord. I hope by now that you've got everything together. We give up our time. We come back to give our time and our offerings. We give an expense offering on Sundays. And then don't forget our building fund. We're still in the process. And, and, and lately, I've, I've got to meet with a committee. And, and our schedules have been so tight lately. But uh, that committee, we're going to have a meeting real soon so that we can start making some reports to the church as the direction that we're going to take. I yet believe God is going to bring us through. Y'all real quiet today. I say, I yet believe God is going to bring us through. Amen. Amen. And we're looking forward to the blessings of the Lord. Let's stand together. We're going to pray God's blessings. Come on, everybody. Let's stand as we pray God's blessings on our offering. Dear God, we thank you. We give you praise, glory, and honor. Thank you for this time of giving. And I pray, God, that you will bless every giver today and every person with the heart to give. Lord, there are those that will give out of abundance. And Lord, there are others who may not have very much, but yet they will give. So let, oh God, the cheerful giver be blessed on today. Thank you for what you've already done. And thank you for what you're about to do. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You can be seated. You know the routine by now. Those that are given traditionally, if you will, pass your offering to the center of the church. And our urchers are coming to receive. Others are giving electronically. Whichever way you decide, we very much appreciate it. Amen. We got a senior urcher and a junior urcher serving on today. God bless them. God bless them.
I'll be doing this for Carl Hill. I went into my classroom, ready for another year at school. I didn't want to work. I just wanted to hang and be cool. I had on the clothes, new sneaks on my feet. I was on time for my class. I went to the back and took my seat. Yeah, I'm moving up. I'm already grown. Soon, I'll be graduating and out on my own. I talked to some of my friends. We were all having fun. I said some things I shouldn't have said. I did some things I shouldn't have done. I knew I was different. I feel God touched my heart. I knew I should set a standard, but then I'd be set apart. Walking to the bus, I wasn't looking straight. I heard the car try to treat you, but it was just too late. I'm standing in this room, and I can see the heavenly gate. Oh no, I never prayed. I thought I had time to get it straight. An angel walked up to me. He had a book in his hand. I knew it was the book of life. Man, when would this dream end? I told him my name and he began to look. Then he looked at me sadly and said, sorry, your name is not in this book. Angel, this is a dream. No, I can't be dead. He closed the book and turned away. He whispered, you cannot proceed ahead. No, no, this can't be real. Angel, you can't turn me away. Let me talk to God. Maybe, just maybe he'll let me say. He led me to the gate. Jesus came to me. He did not let me in but said, Beloved, what is your need? Jesus, I cried, please don't cast me away from you. Tears ran down his face as he said, you knew what you needed to do. Lord, please, I'm young. I never thought I would die. I thought I had plenty of time. Death caught me by surprise. Lord, I went to church. Please, Jesus, I believe. He said, you will not accept me. My love you will not receive. Lord, there were too many hypocrites. They weren't being true. He took one step back and asked, what does they have to do with you? Lord, my family, my family claimed to be saved. They weren't real, you know. He said, I died for you. Now I have to go. I fell to my knees crying to him. Lord, I plan to be real tomorrow. I couldn't make him understand that I had never, ever felt so much sorrow. Then it hit me hard. I said, my Lord, where will I go? He looked into my pretty little brown eyes and said, My child, you already know. Lord, please, I beg, the place is so hot. It seems to trouble and grieve He said, Depart from me, I know you not. Then he said, Depart from me, I know you I know you not. With that, in an instant, they checked it tonight. Now too late, I know the Bible is right. If I can tell you anything, anything at all, hell is a place for the torture separated from God, and full of rage. You know, I thought it was funny, a joke. But this one thing is true. If you never, ever accept Jesus Christ, hell will be waiting for you. Amen. We don't even want to say that that's the place that we don't want to go to. Today is Father's Day. Come on, give a hand to the great fathers in the room. We would like to say Happy Father's Day to the fathers, the step-up fathers, the stepfathers, the uncles who have been a blessing in the lives of the children who are around you. We want you to know that we do not take it for granted for those of you who have done exactly what you were supposed to do. You know, fathers get a bad rep in the um, in society today because so many fathers have not done what they were supposed to do. So many have not taken care of their children. But today we come to celebrate those of you who have. There are good fathers in this room. There are good stepfathers in this room. Good uncles in this room. And at this time we're gonna ask you to stand. And we want to the fathers and Yeah. Okay. Come on, let's make some noise for the fathers in this room today. Your father is not in the room today, but you know you have a good father. Let's make some noise for them today. We thank God for all of the fathers today. I thank God for my own husband, who is the father of my three children. And I want to thank God for him today because um, I know that when, listen, I want to say when we do it God's way. And when you have a man of God who loves God, 
then he will love you and he will love the children. So I thank and praise God there was never a time in our lives, I don't, I, honestly, as I look back, you know, when we first got started and, and the times when we didn't have, I, 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 I don't know how he did, but there was never a time that I told him that our kids needed something and he didn't make it happen. So I definitely want to celebrate him on today because he has been a good father to our children. You know it's something that a, a woman would call her husband dad. I called him daddy for my children so that they would grow up calling him daddy. But when you have a great man of God, a man who loves God and you know will lead you in the right way, you don't mind calling him daddy as your leader, as your, somebody you don't mind following. So I thank God for him on today. Come on, let's give it up for our young people. We're going to stand and sing our last song. I love you forever. Anybody in here love the Lord? Anybody declare that you will love him forever? Young people, let's not be afraid today. Let's sing this song like we love the Lord. All right? Amen. Can you all stand to your feet? It's a real simple song.
for you to be around your children. Amen. In the house with the children. And there might be some things that did not afford you an opportunity to be in the house, but you, you need to be around them as much as possible. Amen. Because I know my father made an impression on me. I told this story before, but um, I remember one summer he had to be away. He went to Little Tennessee State University and he would be away for most of the summer. And so he told me, I think I was about five or six years old, six years old. He told me, said, well, I'm gonna be gone now. You, you be the man of the house. And I took that literally. Oh yeah, oh yeah. I, Take the garbage out, take the neighbor's garbage out. That's a man that's supposed to do that. And uh, one day my mom told me and Keith, said, put your shoes on, get ready. He said, I got to go downtown to the post office. Now I had to watch dad whenever, you know, back then, black men were sharp. Everywhere they went. Uh, my father was suit just back to everything. He was driving Chicago, he driving a suit. <laughs> That's the way it was back then. And whenever he went downtown, he put a necktie on. And so we going downtown, we're going to the post office. I said, wait a minute, Mom. Said, wait a minute. I said, yeah, I got to go get my necktie. <laughs> she said, boy, come on out of this house. <laughs> well, he told me I was the man of the house. And so if he wore a necktie, I thought I needed a necktie. <laughs> to go downtown and uh, the way I'm dressed today uh, this youth Sunday I'm casual today uh, it, it, it took me a while to kind of get used to being casual because <laughs> I, I got as a child I wore suits to church neckties and so forth and that's because I watched what my father was doing Amen. oh if we would have more fathers today that would be the example that they need to be. Things would be so much better in our neighborhoods. Amen. amen. Somehow to say amen. amen. Let me say the word of God. I want to read to you, and and uh, I'm gonna have to cut this message real short because y'all put me up a little bit later than usual. Y'all watch the clock. I watch the clock too. Because if I don't watch the clock, some of y'all will be doing this, <laughs> ducking out on me. And I need to preach to people and not the pews. Amen. Amen. Somebody say, you, you don't have members at church that go to the church and preach to the pew. I, I don't want to preach to no pew. Amen. I want to preach to people. Amen. Amen. I want to read to you from the book of Malachi, chapter 1. Verses 6 through 10. If you'd be so kind, stand with me for the reading of God's word. Malachi chapter 1, 6 through 10. Come on, let's stand, young people. Verse 6 says, A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. Yeah, yeah. Now look at the next part of this verse where God asks the question. If then I be a father, where is my honor? Yeah. And if I be a master, where is my fear? Said the Lord of hosts unto you, mm -hmm. O priest that despise my name. And you say, wherein have we, have we despised thy name? Well, the Lord said in verse 7, He also polluted bread upon my altar. And you say, wherein have we polluted thee? In that ye say, the table of the Lord is contemplable. And if you offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if you offer the lame and the sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor, will he be pleased with thee, or accept thy person, said the Lord of hosts. And now I pray you beseech God that he will be gracious unto us. This hath been how by your means. Will he regard your persons, said the Lord of hosts. Our verse last, verse 13. 
Who is there even among you that will shut the doors for not? Neither do you kindle fire on my own to for not. I have, look at this statement God made here. I have no pleasure in you. Go in that song. The Lord said, I have no pleasure in you, said the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. I want to share with you today uh, from these words, a broken hearted father. A broken hearted father. You may be seated. You may be seated. You ought to be able to tell from these verses. And I need y'all to give me a few minutes here. Why don't everybody say amen? amen. You ought to be able to tell from this passage that this father, God the Father, heaven say God the Father, God. is broken hearted. And yes, he was in this point or this time period as well as he is today. In our text of the day, it is God who declares himself to be a father. father. But his creatures who were made in his image, they were wayward and they were rebellious. Mankind, if you even look in today's time, I'm talking about 2024, has wandered far away from the ways of his household. And if you think about a father, a dad that's here on earth, and you think about it's the father who spoke to set the tone in the house. I need y'all to stay with me here. Amen. How many of y'all remember your father setting the tone in the house? And his word was law. Am I right about that? You used to be years ago that uh, when uh, dad was away from home, going to work, or take care of business, and the children would cut up. The mom sometimes said, "You just wait till your daddy at home," because the father in the house was a disciplinarian. And so, as I look at from a natural standpoint, a father, and I look at. Uh, the fact that today his creation, his creatures, his sons and daughters have wandered from the ways of his household. In other words, they are not listening to his word. They, they are not considering his commands. And, 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 and now my dad, uh, he was a disciplinary. And uh, now, Superintendent Riley, uh, he's up in age. He's in his 80s. He's, a, he's, he's very slim now. Uh, but my dad was 200 plus pounds back then. Very solid and very strong. And as one of his sons, you did not want to make him upset. You did not want to anger him because when you went against his word, he had something for you. Some of y'all all know what I'm talking about. Any of y'all had a dad like that? Yeah. Amen. Uh, Jermichael is my youngest brother. Jermichael did something that he wasn't supposed to do you know, as a child. Jermichael's a lot larger, always been larger than I am. Dad was waiting on him to get home. He walked through the, day, through the door. Dad put a football tackle on him. <laughs> Knocked him over the couch. <laughs> When Jamaica got up, he got up trembling. My mom said, I had to go in and get your father. Because he meant business. Now, if a earthly father has such in him uh, an attitude for correction, what about our heavenly father? Do you know that he has the right to correct you, that he has the right to whip you. I hear the Lord saying this in my ear right now. Some of y'all being punished and you don't even know it. Some of you being whipped right now 
with the circumstances of life and if you would just accept the correction and walk in the right way, then maybe the woman would stop. Y'all ought to get that. Come on, somebody. Why don't you say amen? amen. But, but I want you to look at this text. If you look at it very carefully, God was grieved with his people. He was grieved with his children, the children of Israel. Amen. These children, the children of Israel, they wanted his blessings. Oh, they wanted the goodness of the Lord. But at the same time, they rejected the teachings of his household. You know, as a child, amen, we, we, we wanted the comforts that, that our fathers could provide for us. Say amen somebody. Amen. My wife said that I always tried to make sure that things were right for the children. Well, I got that from my own father. Amen. And, and as a child, I enjoyed the comfort of, of my dad's house. The food, the shelter, amen, the clothing, and, and many things that, that, that I wanted. Amen. It wasn't necessarily a need, but things I wanted. Listen, I just believe that if my father could give it to me, he would give it to me. And many of the things I wanted, he gave it to me because he what? He loved me. But here's the thing. Many times as children, we want all those good things. But yet, we did not want the law of the Father. We did not want to be subjected to our Father. Y'all don't say amen here. Amen. And, and, and when it comes to God the Father, him and say God the Father. Amen. Many of us, we want his son Jesus to be our Savior. But do we want him to be our Lord? Because I'm finding out a lot of folks want him as a Savior, but they don't want him as a Lord. Amen. You, you want him to save you from going to hell. You want him to save you from your distress. You want him to, to provide for you when you need him, when, when you need a blessing. But do you want him to be your Lord? Because in order for him to be your Lord, you got to be subjected to him. You got to hear his word. You got to have an obedient spirit. Why don't you lift your hands and say, Lord, have your way. Come on again and say, Lord, have your way. Well, as I read the word of the Lord in particular, uh, I was reading where Paul wrote in Romans 1 and 18. He wrote here in this passage, he said, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and righteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. And that's the phrase I want y'all to, to, to kind of focus on right now. Who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Israel back then, just like a lot of folks today, they hold the truth in unrighteousness. That means you suppress the truth. You hold it down. You know the truth, but you ignore it. You know the truth, but you won't accept it. You know the truth, but you won't live by it. You know what is right. I knew because my dad had laid down the law in the house, I knew what was right. Yeah. Now, I didn't always do what was right, but I knew what was right. Y'all want to say amen. Yeah. And when it comes to God the Father, you know what is right. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. And when a parent naturally, this is Father's Day, help me say Father's Day. When a father laid down the law, well, if you have not been raised by your father, it's your mother. When the law has been laid down, it grieves a parent. But when the child who knows better, they know what's right, but they continue to do what is wrong. It grieves them because they know that the things that they're doing will bring havoc in their lives, will ultimately destroy them. It breaks the heart of a father. 
to see their children on the streets. Children hanging in the wrong places. Y'all know what I'm saying, man? Amen. This youth day as well. Children who are in places that they ought not be in. You know, I told y'all earlier, I've been praying. I hope y'all let me preach for a while. Can, can I preach for a while, you all? It, 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 it bothers me when all these black boys are going to jail. It bothers me when I watch the news. Amen. And most times, I see young men who are my color in handcuffs. Oh, praise the Lord. It bothers me right here at Greenville. All these young fellas, these young men that who are being killed in our city. That's oh Lord, help us. Help us, Lord. Help the church. God, anoint us that we can get a word out to these young men that their ears are better away. Yeah. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Abelia, look at me and say, Lord, have your way. Come on again and say, Lord, have your way. We look at our text again, verse 6, where this is God speaking. And I, I wish I had gotten to this comment to, to put these scriptures up again. And she might be able to get to it real quick. I don't know. But in verse 6 of our text, uh, the Lord say, A son honoreth his father, and a servant his master. Look what he said. If then I be a father. Come on, repeat that part. If then I be a father. Where is my honor? Come on and say, and if I be a master, where is my fear? Now, let me tell you what being said here, because if I put it in more common English, that's the King James Version, the Lord will say, a son honors his father, and a servant respects his master. And then the Lord really said, I am your father. This is what he was saying. I am your father and master. Where is my honor? The Lord is letting you know I have been disrespected. I've been disrespected. I've been dishonored. Oh, this is powerful. I know this ain't something that's making us run down the aisle, but it's the word of the Lord. Y'all want to say amen, somebody? Amen. And then look at what they did. Look at verse 7. If you look at verse 7, I won't read it. I'll tell you what, what's being said here. They had disrespected God with polluted bread. Oh Amen. They, and in verse 8, he told them that they had given him blind, lame, and sick sacrifices unto God as an offering. Listen, in those days that we come here to praise God, we worship God, we have given him, I hope you have, the sacrifice of praise. We have given an offering, which meant that many of us had to make a sacrifice. Y'all want to say amen. But in those days, when they, went, when they went to the temple of the Lord, on the outside there was an altar. And at the altar, you, you presented bread the meal offering, which would be grains as a sacrifice. So that's what God required in the Old Testament time. He required animals to come. You would bring your goat, your lamb. The, the, the priest would, 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 would cut the neck of the animal. The blood would be sprinkled. You had to do so that your sins be forgiven. But some of those offerings, also animals, was a, was a sign of worship. A sacrifice to the Lord. It was required of God. It honored God. It showed God what the light you were to take in Him. And the Lord said, You done brought me some molded bread. How many of you all eat bread that's got mold in it? Say amen, somebody. Amen. Not only did they, did, did they bring you molded bread. But, but listen, if, if God has been so good to us, don't you think he deserved the best? Yeah. And they were bringing animals that were crippled. Animals that were blind. Animals that were sick. You know, you were on a farm and, and the chicken was sick or the... The, the, the hog or the, 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 the cow was sick with some disease, you probably would eat it. How many of you all won't eat hamburger that come from a cow with mad cow disease? 
Y'all remember mad cow disease? How many of y'all want to eat a chicken that, that died from bird flu? You don't want it because it'll make you sick. It's not going to taste good, is it? The Lord say, now, look at what you have brought me. I wonder how God is looking at some of us here today because I was trying to encourage y'all to get in the praise and a little slow today. Y'all a little sleepy today. Look, I don't know, look, I don't know. But did we really give God our best praise today? The sacrifice of praise? Or did we just give God what was left over? Because that's what, that's what Israel was giving God. They were giving him their leftovers. Help me say leftovers. Leftovers. Yeah, something that I really don't want. Something that I don't need. Lord, I'm going to give you what's left over. And, and you know, when you think about leftovers, I don't know about you, but I don't do so well with a lot of leftover food. And, and why is it that we don't want leftover food? Because leftover food, amen, it, it loses some of its qualities. It, it loses its color. It loses its texture. It doesn't taste fresh as it did when you first cooked. Y'all ought to say amen. amen. Have you ever tried to eat leftover catfish two days later? Amen. You want your catfish fresh and hot but when you take catfish out of the refrigerator and put it in the microwave it just don't taste right y'all say amen how many of y'all like ship the donuts raise your hand yeah I, I, I knew the young folks gonna raise their hand I like ship the donuts too there you go. Say them again. When they're what? When they're hot. But if you take ship them home, you know, when it'll stop cooking them and try to put it in the microwave, it changes the texture of the donut. It doesn't give you the, the, the satisfaction that you want. Y'all want to say amen here. If we don't want leftovers. What about God? I said, what about God? You, you, you ladies in here, amen. Or it could be the, the man. I'm talking about married folk now. But even if you, you date to be married, you don't want no leftover time from your spouse or the one you want to marry. You, you, want, you want them to give you uh, the proper time. You want them to give quality time. You want, you want to be known as being number one amen. in their life. Y'all all say amen. amen. Sometimes Sister Riley is a way, you know, she worked over in Arkansas. So we talk about every day she's coming home. Or sometimes she has a little time in the office. And I may be on the phone with somebody. And I see she's calling me, but I'm thinking that what I'm doing is important. And, 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 and then I, I call her back and I say, well, I, I was on the phone. Sometime on the phone with Elder Larry Lewis. I'm talking on the phone with Elder Lewis. And I, I say, look, Elder Lewis called me and I was discussing. She said, look, you tell Elder Lewis that your wife is calling. And you're going to get back with him. I told El Lewis, I was on the phone again, I said, El Lewis, El Lewis, I said, my wife called, and she was fussed at me, she told me that I'm supposed to take a call, no matter who I'm talking to, I, I, I need to see what she want, and Lewis started laughing, he said, yeah, you better take a call, <laughs> you won't get in no, no trouble with her, take a call. If we're like that when it comes to our spouses or when it comes to if you're dating, then what about God? But you know, you know the Lord, and I, I told y'all this in a message before, uh, that many of us, we give him our leftover time. Uh-oh. What I mean by that? We give him leftover prayers. We give him leftover church attendance. In other words, you give God what's remaining. Which means 
he's not number one in my life. Uh-oh, I got quiet on me. You give him your leftover. Let me say leftover. Yeah. If I got some time left over, after all the things I want to do, I give him what remains. Say amen, somebody. Amen. So if I have some time left over, I'll pray. Leftover prayer. I do everything I need to do. Go to work. Take care of stuff at the house. Go shopping. Do my hobbies. And if I got some time left over, then I pray. Amen. And by the time I get to that point, I'm so tired, I'm, I'm going to sleep. <laughs> I think that when you get up in the morning, you ought to start the morning on praising God. <laughs> Amen. And, and see, I, I know I'm a morning person. I, 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 I do better. The things I have to do, I need to do it in the morning. If we go on a long trip, sometimes my, my family is fussing and can't, you know, but we got to go on a long trip. I, I, I want to, I want us to leave, you know, three o'clock in the morning, you know, three, four o'clock in the morning, and and I tell I'm starting off because I'm, I'm pretty strong early in the morning, dry. All on in the day, I get a little sleep again, and I'm just that way. So I start my morning off with prayer. I have to give him some time, y'all. And I'm talking, I got to give him some quality time when I talk to him and give him opportunity to talk to me. But, but many of us, we give him leftover time. We give him, give him leftover time to read our Bibles. I got some time left over. I, I, I read my Bible then. And some of us, we give him leftover time when it comes to going to church. If I got time left over, I'll go to church. I want to know what kind of respect and honor is that for our God, the King of kings, Lord of lords, our healer, our deliverer, the one I depend on. I'm going to give him leftover time or will I make him number one in my life? Somebody tell him thank you. Somebody tell God thank you. The Lord told Israel in this text, he said, you go back and look at it. It's in verse Eight, he said, uh, give your governor, your politicians, give them the blind and the lame and the sick animals and, and see what he be pleased with you. That, he said, give that to them. That, that was, that was a, a method of paying taxes, y'all. And, and so uh, I, I, I tell you what, try to give the internal revenue service what's left over and see what happens. Give them your leftover money and see what happens. Y'all know what the IRS would do. Amen. They'll go in your bank account and you won't even know it and take what they think is right. Amen. They'll come and put you out of your house and will sell it. Y'all say amen. amen. Y'all come on and say amen. amen. So the Lord said, give it to them and see what they say. In, in verse 9, God asked them, and I'm using a paraphrase here. He said, go ahead. And beg God to be merciful to you. In other words, you need his mercy. So go on and, you know, you're doing what you want to do. You're giving them all this leftovers. Now, you, you go ahead and, and when you get in trouble, amen, ask God to be merciful to you. But when you bring that kind of an offering, why should he show you any favor at all? How many of you all know you need the favor of God? Lord, I need your favor. Thank you, Jesus. And, and, and when you think about it as a parent, amen, that's been disrespected, the thought would, would come, why should I show them any favor? Why should God show us any favor when we're disrespecting him? When we have not honored him when we give him leftovers. Somebody say leftovers. leftovers. Come on, say leftovers. leftovers. Oh, I see I can't finish this message. So I ain't gonna even try it, y'all. But you look at verse 10. Let me read it. Because in verse 10 it says, Who is there even among you that will shut the doors or not? Neither do ye kinder fire on my own. In other words, the Lord was saying, I wish that someone would shut the temple doors 
so that these worthless sacrifices could not be offered. Yeah. I wonder, as I was looking at this, how does God feel about us coming to church? I wonder, as we give our sacrifice of praise, as we give out monetary gifts that we call offerings, I wonder how does God feel about us? I wonder what does God say about living of the battle? Let's make it personal. How does he see us? Hallelujah. Will God say to us, I wish somebody would padlock the doors. I wish they would lock the doors and hear no more singing from the praise team, the choir. Hear no more praise and worship. I wish that there were no more offering being taken because you have disrespected me. I'm talking about the broken hearted God. Yes. I think we have to take a look at how we worship him. Yes. How we honor him. Yes. Y'all ought to say amen. amen. I'm going to close in a few more minutes. But listen, do you know and you need to understand that God is who he is. He's above everybody. Sometimes we try to when, when we talk about good versus evil, we try to put Satan here and God here and, and they battling each other and they're on an equal turn. No, 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 no. The devil's way down here. And God is above the city. There is no comparison. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And who are you to think that you are on the same level as God? All these folks talk about speaking into their existence mm -hmm. and calling things, you know, in, you know, calling things to them. Folk, one preacher now this evening, call money. Just, just say money, come here. Money, 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 come here. And the folk, they would chant that money, 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 come here. And, and, and what they were doing, the money would leave the pocket because it was going to him. <laughs> it wouldn't come into them, but he said, you can just call money. And, uh, and, and, and so people try to, you know, now people talk about their little God, their God. You got one preacher that even declared that, that the father told him, said that you could have done the same thing that Jesus did. Now, you look at all these folks want to equate themselves to God. And the Lord said that a whole nation is as but a drop in the bucket. You're not even a half a drop, not a one-fourth of one, one thousand of a drop. He said a whole nation, when it comes to me, is like a drop in the bucket. Who am I to, to put myself against God? I'm getting ready to close, y'all. I want to say something that's what I do. But, but, but let, me, let me make this point. Don't play with God. Come on, look at your name and say, don't play with God. <laughs> Don't, don't listen. I, I need to teach it because some of y'all don't know this. But, but, but don't, don't give God nicknames. Yes. Amen. That's disrespectful. Amen. Some of you all don't know when people talk about Jesus. That, that's a derivative rhythm of Jesus. You ever hear folks say gosh or, or golly, golly. That, that's a nickname for God. Amen. And then people even you the name God with the curse word. Well, that is so disrespectful. That is, that, that is so bad to use God's name in vain. Y'all don't have to say something here. Years ago, people respected God, even if they were not saved. They respected his house. If they were driving by a church, some of y'all don't say this. And they were playing ungodly music that turned it down. They wouldn't smoke on the church ground. They wouldn't curse. Amen. Wouldn't do drugs on the church ground. We, done had, we had to purchase a sign. Particularly when we have films. Yes. The yes. sign that said no drinking. I think of no, no, no alcohol. No drugs. Because we had a couple of films. And they were smoking them funny cigarettes in the bathroom. <laughs> All out there Amen. on the, 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 the parking lot. Yes. And look like folk would have decent to know that you don't do that on the church ground or in the church. Amen. 
Do you all know that this is God's house? Let me say God's house. God's house. How many of y'all know this is God's house? Amen. And his house is different from your house. Amen. So you are respect. If you don't respect your own house, you are respect God's house. Y'all come on and say amen. amen. If, if, if you're not saying certain words, I will not come out your mouth still when you, especially when you're in God's house. Y'all come on then. Well, I have respect. And, and look, I'm, I'm going to go a little bit further here. You know, because some of you all, I don't know if we do this as much now. I, I remember years ago, uh, in our home, the, the, the mother would be so proud of the living room. Put a new couch, new love seat, and don't let it be white. Mm. You, you couldn't carry no food in the living room. All right, sir. You couldn't eat in no room. All right. If we honor our own house like that, then we ought not be eating in the sanctuary. Yeah. Yeah. Chewing gum in the sanctuary. I'll say amen. amen. Come on, come on, say amen. amen. Now I understand these little children, little babies, they got to have a little something. But, but don't let them live in God's house. And then you got a fellowship hall back here too. Y'all come on here. Amen. Say amen, somebody. Amen. This is a holy ground. This is a special place. Yes. This is a place where God's presence. And so when I come here, I ought to honor his presence. It's a holy ground. Let me say a holy ground. This van that y'all riding on, it's a holy van. So no ungodly stuff ought to be on the van. No ungodly music ought to be on the van. I don't care if you got earplugs in your ears. Y'all say amen. Amen. And then y'all stop littering. I'm fussing down again. Y'all stop littering these veins. <laughs> We're in that van all day. Food everywhere. Crumbs everywhere. Them vans cost a lot of money. Y'all, come on now. Y'all all say, I'm still preaching. But the van is holy. So we ought to take care of God's property. Y'all all say amen. But lift your hands the Lord have your way. Come on, get the Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way. Now I'm closing. I'm closing. But listen to me. This is Father's Day. Can I say one last word? About Father's Day. Some of you have come. I talked about the brokenhearted Father. That's God the Father. That was the essence of my message. But then some of you may say, when I'm brokenhearted, I have some problems with this day. Because my father has never really been around me. My father has never taken time up with me. Could be someone in here who doesn't even know who their father is. Amen. Amen. I know that I'm what I am today because I had a good father in my home. My, my dad. But some of you don't have that same testimony. When I was teaching school, the young lady told me she was a senior. She, I asked her, what are you all going to do when you graduate? She said, Reverend Ryan, when I graduate, I'm going to get my diploma. And, and she said, next couple of days, I'm going to get on my bus, and I'm going out of state to the, to the state where my dad lives. And I'm going to go ring the doorbell. And when he answers the door, I'm going to spur him. <laughs> and she meant it, too. She was short, but she was stocking had large hands, and she was incising. She meant what she said. I said, baby, don't, don't, don't spurge your dad. Don't hit your dad. I said, why you want to do that? And she talked about how her father had treated her, how her father had no time with her. Her father didn't even call her, didn't give a birthday gift. I had football players crying in my in, in my classroom, in the hallway, because they said, my dad don't spend any time with me. Broke my heart. Broke my heart, y'all. And as I got older as a school teacher, I found myself being more of a father to the students I was teaching. 
because they had missing fathers. And that's what some of you, Lord told me to talk about this, that's what some of you all today, your heart has been broken as well because you have not had a father in your life. That's, that's, that's a situation in the black community. Y'all all say amen right amen. there. Yeah, yeah, that's a situation. And, and listen to it, listen to this. Uh, men and the theologians, and I agree with it, I agree with it. One of the reasons that men of our children are having problems knowing how to relate to God the Father is because God the Father intended that your father be in the home to show you that he is a provider. Your earthly father was going to show that he was a provider and a protector. Amen. A one that will love you, take care of you. And because that's been missing in your life, sometimes it make it hard for you to relate to God the Father who is standing and says, I want to be your provider. I want to be your protector. I want to show you what real love is. I want to help you. You that are hurting, God the Father, I want to heal. You have your brother hurts. So if you have not had that example physically, God is saying that I'll be a father to the Father. And how does he do that? He does that by, I heard somebody talk about step of fathers. People that, was, that will work, people that will help you. He will give you individuals to be a father for you. But you got to let the Lord do the work he wants to do. Somebody tell God thank you. And I'm saying today, come on, let's stand. Give me a little music, Brother Ornest. Come on, let's stand. Let's stand. Some of you have come here broken heart. Some of you have come here distressed. Father's Day doesn't mean anything to you, but it should. Because God is a healer. And he wants to heal you right now. He wants to deliver you. He wants to show you kindness, love, and compassion. He wants to show you that. That you in return will love him back. Yes. You in return will accept him. Yes. Yes. And become subjected to him. And begin to obey him. Where he can really pour out his blessings. In your life. You may not have done what you ought to have done. You may not have done what you should have done. But God is yet saying, I love you. Young man, he's saying, I love you. You don't have to go in search of love in the streets and join a gang. Join an organization uh, that are involved in drugs, criminal activity. He's saying there's a better way, and I want to show you a better way. I thank God for Brother Dixon, what he shared with you today. Amen. He's a good example of a man that has turned his life around. Amen. Deacon Long Amen. back there, he shared with you his testimony. Amen. Started drinking when he was a teenager. But God turned him around. There are other men here that the Lord has blessed and God has turned around. They're successful in what they're doing now. Yes. Successful in life. God wants to do the same thing. He wants to deliver you. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody help me tell him thank you. He wants to help you today. He wants you to be in that place where you don't have to be broken hearted. Be in that place where as he shares his love with you, that he doesn't have to be broken hearted. You see, not only is he broken hearted when you are disobedient, but he's broken hearted when he sees you going down the wrong path and you're going into destruction. God takes no delight in people that are being shot on the street. He takes no delight a person that was strung out on drugs. He takes no delight of people that are going to prison. It disturbs him. He's broken hearted about those things. But he's saying, come today. 
I sent my son to be your savior. I sent him there to die for your sins, to give you an opportunity to get it right with God. I'm asking you now, but there are some of you, you know your heart has been broken. You know you've been disturbed. I know you're here. I want you to come to this altar. I want to pray for you. And it's not just our children, some of you adults, because of things that took place in your life years ago. Sometimes when you were, sometimes adults when they were children were traumatized and yet suffering the hurt. Amen. You need to come to this altar. Amen. I know God is going to deliver. There's some more of you. You know you need to come. Don't stay where you are. Make your way to the altar right now. Jesus loves you. Jesus cares about you. He's concerned about you. Somebody that ought to tell God, thank you. Come on, we're not going to be here very long. We're not going to be here very long. But we want to do what God has given us to do. We want to stay here as long as God wants us to stay. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody help me tell him thank you. Got to do a little bit better. Lift your hand and tell God thank you. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray today. I'm going to pray that the yoke be destroyed. I'm going to pray that God will bring about deliverance. That God will bring about a change. Saints, we all help me to pray. Amen. Saints, will y'all help me to pray? Amen. Y'all help me to pray for a few minutes. Because this is a time of deliverance. I, 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 I want to pray. And the Spirit of God move on this altar. Yes, Lord. And that he brings forth healing. That he brings forth deliverance. Yes, Lord. If you want to be saved and you're not saved, God will save you. God will turn you around. Close your eyes for a moment. Close your eyes for a moment. Dear God, we thank you. And we praise your name right now. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your blessings. You've been so kind to me. You've been so good to me. And God, I praise you now for what you've already done. Lord, look upon these persons who are standing at the altar now. You know every one of them, Lord. You see them where they are. You see the hurts, Lord. Some of them would never admit that they cried at home. Some of them will never admit that the tears have streamed down their faces. But you know every one of them, Lord. Lord, you know what has made them sad. You know what has broken their hearts. And I pray for deliverance. I pray for healing. Yes, In the name of Jesus, touch your Lord. Yes, touch your mind, dear God. Yes, Jesus, you're my healer. Jesus, you're my help right now. My help in the time of crisis. My help, the help I need. Help me, Lord. Why don't every mouth is all to tell him, help me, Lord. Come on, every mouth is all to tell him, tell him, help me, Lord. I need help, Lord. I want you to tell him, I need help, Lord. I need help, Lord. You know my heart. You've seen me, Lord. You've seen my tears. Things that I've never told anybody about. Touch me now, Lord. Send your touch, Lord. Send your touch, Lord. Jesus, I need a touch. Jesus, I need a touch. Help me. Oh, God, help me now. Help me. Come on, don't tell him help me. Somebody tell him help me. Somebody tell him help me. I need help, Lord. You see me where I am. You know my mind. You know my struggles, Lord. Oh, God. Send your touch. Send deliverance. Send deliverance. Send all your deliverance. In the name of Jesus. God, let her be healed today. Let her be healed today. Don't let her go home the same way. But let there be a difference. We bind you now, Satan. We cast you out of here. We cast you out of the mind. 
In the name of Jesus. Saints, will y'all help me say, in the name of Jesus. Come on, I need the prayer word to come on and cry. In the name of Jesus. We plead the blood. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. That makes whole now. Come on and rescue me. Come on and touch me. Come on and deliver me. Will y'all help me to pray here? Lord, send deliverance. Lord, send your deliverance. Deliver the man here, Lord. Deliver the man here. Break the God, we need you now. We need your help. We need your help. We need your help. You know how to heal. Give him a breakthrough, Lord. Give him a breakthrough, Lord. Give him a breakthrough, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Somebody said it, yes, Lord. Tell it, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Have your way. Have your way. Come on, preacher. Pray for it a little bit longer. Have your way, Lord. Come on, hold this on, but tell them, have your way. Lord, have your way. Lord, have your way here. On this altar now. You're moving by your spirit. You're moving here now. You're moving. You're moving here now. God, touch it. Oh, uh -huh. Touch her now, Lord. Deliver, deliver. Sit on your deliverance. Sit on your deliverance here. Sit on your deliverance. Touch right now. Touch right now. We need a touch, Lord. You see her, Lord. You know where she is. Help, Lord. Help her now. Let her be healed. Let her be healed, Lord. Heal from a brokenness. Heal, Lord. Heal, Lord. You've seen her tears. You know the anguish that is here. The anxiety that is here. Lord, give her deliverance. Give her deliverance. Tell him help me. Come on, Lord. Tell him help me. Hey, tell him help me, Lord. I need your help. I need your blessing. Come on and bless me. Sit on your blessing. Sit on your touch. Sit on your touch. Saints, will y'all help me to pray? Sit on your touch. Touch, Lord. Touch her, Lord. Let her know you love her. Let her know you care about her. Let her know you're concerned about her. Oh, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Let her feel your love. The love that you have, Lord. In the name of Yes, Lord. 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 Touch right now. Touch right now. Let the yoke be shorn. I command you now, Satan, to take your hands off. I command you to leave now. In the name of Jesus. I need a missionary to come. Thank you, Jesus. I need a missionary to come. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Hug and pray with her. Yeah, I speak life here. I speak life. What about other missionaries? Come on, missionaries. I speak life here. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody tell them thank you. Hug that daughter there. Pray with her. Come on, say, Lord. I need help. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Help, Lord. Somebody say, help, Lord. Help me, Jesus. I need help, Lord. I need you, God. Touch this young man. Touch him. Touch him, Lord. We need your touch. We need your blessing. Thank you for these young men. Thank you for them coming to church. God, let them know how real you are. Let them feel your presence. Let them go home another way. Let them, oh God, be blessed. Let them be touched. Sit on your touch, Lord. Somebody say, sit your touch. Sit on your touch. 
Bless us now, Lord. Bless us now, Lord. I sense, Lord, that she want to go to another level. Take her higher, Lord. Take her to another level. Touch now. Touch her mind, Lord. Touch her heart, Lord. Bring about a chain. Bring about healing. Heal, Lord. Oh God, manifest us in their lives. Let them know, God, that they have a part, even in the ministry, in the church, Lord. Let them grow up, oh God, and continue to be beautiful young ladies that will give their hearts and their minds to you. The God that you will make out of them, what you want them to be. I believe in Lord, and I claim it now, in Jesus' name. This young lady, bless the Lord, the things that are on her mind, the things that are on her heart. Oh God, reveal it, reveal it, reveal it. Bless the Lord. You see the that is here. I don't know what it is, Lord, but you know God. You know the deep secret that is here. Touch the Lord. Touch of God. In the name of Jesus, send your peace. Send deliverance. Oh, God, you got it for Help me, Lord. Lord, I tell him, help me. I want you to tell him, help me, Lord. Come on, tell that help me, Lord. Touch right now. And bless of God. The heart of God. To know more of you. To know more about you. God, do it. Take her to another level. Take her higher, Lord. Let her be blessed the more. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, thank you. We thank you for this young man. Touch him, Lord. Make him whole, Lord. You are a deliverer. You are a healer. We need healing, Lord. The healing of the mind. The healing of his emotion. He's coming to church, Lord. Let there be a change in his life. Let there be a change of direction. Touch let healing take place. Thank you for this prayer. Touch it, Lord. Touch now, Lord. God, I want you to be able to go home without the pain. I want you to be able to go home and not have to depend on this pain. You're just that kind of a healer that know how to heal his body, how to heal his back, how to heal his leg. The blood of Jesus prevail. The blood of somebody said the blood of Jesus prevail. God, you are one the work of God. He's in the right place at the right time. I pray for healing. I pray for a release. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I believe. Somebody said, Lord, I believe. Thank you for his wife. Touch up now, God. Give us strength, Lord. A man, Lord. A body, Lord. Let her be blessed. We thank you for this child. Bless it, Lord. Touch it, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me lay hands on Mother. Lord, I thank you. Hold up, hold up, Mother. Hold up, Mother. God, I thank you. I thank you for your goodness. I thank you for your blessing. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Touch right now. Touch our mind. Touch right now. Touch up. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. We thank you. We bless your name. Can you tell God thank you? We get ready to go to our seats. But I need everybody. I need everybody. 
do not see. Stand up, stand up today, Lord. Stand up. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. We pray here. Yes, Lord. We pray. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. And you know what? There's a blessing in the praise. Yes, Lord. There's a blessing in the praise. We're not gonna hold you all day. We're not gonna hold you much longer. But you included the young people. Can you call with all you got? Don't you don't have to be ashamed. You don't have to be ashamed. I want y'all to praise God. How we praise him. We're gonna clap our hands. We're gonna thank him. We're gonna shout hallelujah. I want you to do your very best. Remember we talking about the sacrifice of praise? Y'all want to talk about that? Yes, God. Giving God our best. I want you just for a moment. Do it right now. Come on, right now. Come on. Come on, come on. I don't have to be on the mic, but you prayed. You prayed. Tell God, thank you. Come on. I can tell y'all to stop. Sometimes we give up a little too quick. Sometimes we stop too quick. He wants to hear you say that thank you. He wants to, come on. God is giving release to somebody. There is a release in this praise. Some of y'all won't praise. But tell God thank you. Oh, I just want to thank you. Come on, come on, don't stop. Can y'all give him praise? Can y'all give him praise? Don't tell him thank you. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for touching me. Thank you for blessing me. I dare you to break loose here. I dare you to break loose. I did. That's your daughter. Come on, give it all you got. Give it all you got. That's it. Give it all you got. Give it. Come on. I tell you to give it all you got. Somebody tell it, thank you. This year we have showed them how to praise. Show them how to praise. Y'all come on, give them a praise. Make a loud noise. Make a loud noise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep praising them. Keep, keep praising them. Keep praising them. Keep praising them. Keep praising them. God, I thank you. Oh, praise them, praise them, praise them. Somebody give them a praise. Somebody, 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 somebody. Praise them. You'll feel that if you pray. He don't like the praise of the people. Oh, you want to praise him. Praise him, praise him, praise him, praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Y'all are heaven said they thank you. Thank you, Jesus. That's it, that's it. He delights to pray. Yeah, my Tell him thank you. Tell him thank you. Come on, son. Tell God thank you. Come on, son. Tell God thank you. Come on, son. Tell God thank you. Come on, give him a praise. Come on, give him a praise. Come on, give him a praise. I'm giving that y'all go to your seats. You get ready to go home? But I just believe, I just believe, I just believe. And that was a little bit better. But I dare you, like I hear somebody say, give him a praise and praise. Yes, yes. I know, I, I, I know you want to touch somebody. I'm going to do something else here. I know it's time to go home, y'all. But, but, but I, I feel his presence right now. I, I, I feel a breakthrough. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I feel a breakthrough here. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And somebody will say, Lord, let it be me. Lord, let it be me. Let it be me. Did you really mean that? Somebody say, Lord, let it be me. But I 
I dare you to get to a point where you're not ashamed. I dare you to just let go. We got the scream, run, holler. I'm talking about just really, really, really just, just, just let go for just a few seconds and see what God will do. Now you hear what I'm saying. Are you bold enough to do it? I saw you bold enough to do it. Do it now. Do it now. Come on.
and we believe all is well. Thank you for your touch and thank you for your healing. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God a praise. Give him a praise. Give him a praise. My God, my God. We got to go home. But the presence of the Lord is in this place. And his presence is here to heal, to deliver, to break yokes. Glory to your mind. Glory to your mind. Yes. Somebody need a yoke destroyed right now. And the Lord said, I'm ready. I'm waiting on you. Sometimes we've got to claim this thing. we got to believe it, y'all. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Somebody here tell him, thank you, Jesus. Be healed today. I say, be healed today. Be healed in your body. Be healed in your mind. Some of y'all got family distress. Family dysfunction. Be healed in the house. Hey, hey, I'm just telling you what the Lord said to tell you. Be healed. need to catch up to this thing. You got to believe it. Glory. 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 Be healed. His presence is here to heal you. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Somebody call it right now, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Somebody call his name right now. Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Tell him thank you. Thank you, Jesus. For my healing. Thank you, Jesus. For my miracle. Thank you, Jesus. For my deliverance. release right now. He's healing somebody right now. Don't let him pass you by. Don't miss out on your deliverance. Don't miss out on your blessing. But let the Lord do it for you now. Tell the Lord, do it for me. You know what I need. Do it for me, Lord. You know all about my situation. And I praise you, God. And I Y'all need to say that thank you. Y'all need to say that thank you. Y'all need to say that thank you. Be healed, my sister. The blood of Jesus for them. Lord, I believe it. Lord, I believe it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Somebody said it, yes, Lord. Somebody said it, yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. All right. You're in the red circus, miss. Come on, sister, announcer. All right. Because I sure forget to write the announcements. But they feel like they got some things written down. All right. 
announcement. Please join us for a retirement party celebration for Dorothy Lee Jones, June 16, 2024, 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Karen David, 209 Goldfinch, Food and Fellowship. Weekly service, Monday worship service, 5.30, Wednesday Bible study at 5.30. We have concession love from yesterday. You may purchase them at the church. This is from Sister Knight Jones. The Knight family and I would like to thank God for my church family. I would like to thank each of you for your prayers, give donations, love, hugs, presents, and word of encouragement. The prayers were definitely filled. God has granted me a sense of peace that surpasses all understanding. I love each of you, and I love each of you with the God with the love of God. Again, thank you. Amen. Thank you. Praise God again. Just want to remind everyone about men's uh, men's day program on the fifth Sunday in this month. We're excited about it. Amen. We have a great program and also a magnificent speaker, is Superintendent Jesse Hutton. Amen. So we're excited about it. Amen. We want you to be excited about it. Amen. And the program is already set. We're looking forward to seeing each and every one of you here to help us to celebrate men's day. Can we look at everyone to say men's day? Amen. And we're expecting all of the men to be here. And there are many that are out there in the audience that are going to be on the program. In addition to that, amen, we're looking for the women, amen, to be here with us. Amen. And so God bless you all today, amen. And also all the men, amen, we're asking you to give us a mere offering of $100. Amen. Praise God. So we want to do our very best. And all of the lay members and every member of this church, if you could just give us $25. And we do that, we can do a real great job here in the place. Amen? Amen. Amen. So please don't let us down, but because the program is going to be exciting, exciting speakers, and we're going to pack the house. So God bless you on today. And remember what we're asking for. Amen. This is going to go toward a moment of our, our fun that the pastor has set forth. And Pastor, I believe we're going to have that program at 3 p.m. on that Sunday. Amen. 3 p.m. And I'm not certain what we're going to have service. We probably will not do the morning service. We'll do one service at that. Amen. That's the fifth Sunday now. Not next Sunday. Next Sunday is the fourth Sunday. But on the fifth Sunday, because y'all now can't I'll get y'all out of two services. We're going to do one service. Amen. God bless you on the day. Thank you. All right, let's say amen. Sister Moses, Sister Moses, stand up too. Go ahead, Sister Moses. Go ahead. I, I wanted to say that Elder Green and Sister Green have three bags of fathers. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.